and welcome to Norwood News. Today is Friday, January 20th, and I'm your host, Kristen McDonald. It is great to have you with us as we end another week here in Norwood. This week on Norwood News, the Norwood Police Department completes another drug bust. Tom O'Rourke stops in to talk about the benefits of the Neponset River Regional Chamber. But first, it was a bittersweet reunion at the NHS gym on Friday, January 6th. Norwood High basketball fans and alumni came to celebrate some very special people at the first ever Giles Parker Crosstown Classic, where two awards would be given out in honor of two Mustangs that Norwood recently lost. Norwood High School hosted the first ever Giles Parker Crosstown Classic basketball game on the Nolette Johnson Court. Named in honor of longtime girls basketball coach and high school history teacher, Giles Parker. The event, created by Mustang basketball alumni, also honors two very special people. Andrea Dixon Lavery, class of 01, who recently lost a tough battle to cancer, and Kevin McDonald, a longtime supporter of Mustang basketball. Andrea Dixon Lavery was a member of the ba Mustang basketball team from 1997 to 2001. Throughout Andrea's career, she was a two-time MVP, a two-time Bay State League All-Star, and was twice voted team captain. Andrea adored her teammates and coach GP. Kevin McDonald was a proud Westwood native and member of Westwood's 1962 Tech Tourney Championship team. After his family moved to Norwood in the early 1980s, Kevin was an integral part of the creation of the Norwood Basketball Association and the original Metro West travel teams. Once his daughters Kelly and Casey were in high school, he worked with his wife Mim and the other basketball parents to create the Norwood High Hoopsters Boosters to help financially support our beloved Norwood High School girls program. Catherine Clifford, NHS class of 05 and the coach of the girls Westwood basketball team is humbled to be part of this special event. Um, I think the, the Norwood Girls Basketball Alumni Network is, I think, the strongest around. It's, I mean, it's an honor to be a part of it. I think it all centers through GP. Um, we've had a couple events over the years. I'm very fortunate that they kind of cater to my schedule and pick the Westwood game, so it's great to be here. Um, but obviously with two, I mean, huge losses in the last couple years, and Andrea and Kevin, uh, it was a no-brainer with Kevin's background in Westwood to make this game and sort of make it an event. Um, his daughters, Casey and Kelly, kind of kind of took it and ran with it. Um, obviously, Chris McDonald on the Norwood side is, is on board and very close with that family, and um, it's just a special night. It came together really well. And again, just happy it's the Westwood game and I get to be a part of it. Parker's family attended the event. His son, Giles Jr., comments on how much the Mustangs meant to his dad. Oh, it, it was everything. I mean, his players, their families, they were like family to him, to us, to my mom, who was always in the stands and couldn't miss a game. Uh, also to see all, all of his players go on to coach or to ha have kids who became players for him again. I mean, it was just everything to him. He put hours and hours into it all the time. At the end of the game, the Andrea Dixon Lavery Award and Kevin McDonald Award were given out to a player from each team. Kevin's daughter, Casey, and Andrea's sister, Allie, and her daughter, Allie, spoke on what this event means to their families. I'll start with Giles first and foremost. One of Andrea's sort of last wishes was to make sure we had a lasting impact under Giles's name as there's things getting named. So hint, hint for people out there. Um, we want to have something named after GP. It was a very important part of all of our lives and keeping all of us together. So that's where that started. And then obviously with losing dad and Andrea this year, it made sense with my father being from Westwood too and then being a strong Nord advocate. And obviously the impact all the Dixons have had on this program, we just found a way to tie it all together. Casey found, a, Casey found a way to tie it all together. Casey and Kristen McDonald and Catherine put a lot of effort into this, and it um, means a lot. I know to Allie's mommy and my sister, because she loved Nord basketball, and she loved all the alumni and Giles Parker, so it means a tremendous amount to our family. Right, Allie? Yeah. With a packed barn, the first ever Giles Parker Crosstown Classic was a success, and the families are honored to be part of this special event. I definitely want to thank everybody, the alumni, the coaches, all the players who came back for remembering my dad, but also uh, Mr. McDonald, who was a super fan, and, and Andrea Dixon, because the Dixon family was just such a huge part of, uh, of Norwood and, and his career here. As the coach of our NHS girls basketball team, I was so fortunate to have a front row seat to such a nice tribute. The huge turnout of alumni there to support these Norwood legends and their families is what makes Norwood so special. And I was so appreciative that our own team was able to see that they play for something much bigger than themselves. Just a really great night with great community. Switching gears, 
Late last week, a search warrant was served at a residence on David Terrace in conjunction with Randolph Police and NORPAC. Chief Brooks has the details. Hi, Chief Bill Brooks of the Norwood Police Department. I just want to talk a little bit about a, a drug raid that occurred last Thursday uh, here at the apartments at the end of David Terrace that may have caused some commotion in the neighborhood. I just want to talk a little bit about it. So this, um, the investigation that led to that raid uh, began with the Randolph Police Department. They were the lead agency and, and really headed up the investigation. Early on in the investigation, uh, they realized that there was a tie to Norwood and then looped in Norwood detectives. And of course, we work within the confines of the NORPAC task force, so we, we were involving those detectives as well. Um, on uh, Thursday, a subject who was uh, one of the targets in the investigation was arrested on the South Shore. And as soon as he was taken into custody and product was found on him, uh, that triggered the search warrant that was executed here at the apartments at 55 David Terrace. So in a case like this, our detectives uh, approached, um, they knocked on the door, announced that they were the police and they had a search warrant. They did that a couple of times, nobody answered the door. All of a sudden the back door opened and, and two men came running out. Uh, Norwood police detectives gave chase and uh, after a very short distance they took the men, two men into custody. A uh, third subject was discovered inside and then a search for evidence was conducted. Um, a large amount of methamphetamine was recovered and a large amount of fentanyl as well, uh, as well as some pills uh, which will be going in for analysis, but we believe those to be oxycodone. So, you know, although the, the raid took place here in Norwood, as I said, the case really began with the Randolph police and was, was highly multi-agency throughout. And that's really the what has become the nature of drug enforcement these days is everything is multi-agency. So the NORPAC task force is comprised of detectives from 17 departments. Uh, in this case, I've already mentioned the Randolph Police Department and the South Shore Drug Task Force. Uh, and then uh, state police and police officers from the office of the Norfolk District Attorney, as well as federal agents were, were here participating in this case. So it was all very successful. Uh, a little alarming that there was so much meth and so much fentanyl that was recovered. Uh, these men are uh, being held on, on high bail and uh, just really good work by Randolph PD, as I said, and uh, the detectives who supported them. The Neponset River Regional Chamber is a local resource to Nord businesses and surrounding communities. President and CEO Tom O'Rourke explained to NCM how the Chamber helps businesses and also talks about upcoming events they'll be hosting. Yeah, there's a number of different benefits and it really depends on the business, but most of the members that we have are joining because they want to network. They want to expand their presence in the area, get to know other business people so that they can build their business. Um, so that's really number one. Uh, but we also have a lot of companies that are that may be bigger companies that don't necessarily need the networking and they're there because they know that we're going to be there to support them to advocate for them uh, and to uh, to try to just make the place a better make the community a better place to do business um, so this year we're looking forward to our annual meeting which is the next big event uh, but we're also going to be planning another restaurant week promotion uh, in the spring uh, and then we've got our usual networking events sort of scattered in between uh, and then, we'll, then we'll, as we get further along, we'll start to look into the second and third quarter. We have a, a guest speaker uh, whose name is Jordan Maynard, and he is a commissioner on the Mass Gaming Commission. So uh, obviously gaming is a hot topic in, in the state. We've had uh, casino gambling the past several years, but now we've got newly expanded um, sports betting. So for folks who are interested in that, uh, I think it'll be interesting to hear from him as they talk about how they're going to roll out the whole sports betting process. The other thing we have is we'll be giving out some awards to local businesses uh, who've done some good things over the past year. Uh, a couple of Norwood businesses we're going to recognize are DCD Automotive, which is uh, the Bach dealerships. Uh, they were a huge supporter of the, uh, the 150th anniversary and in particular bringing the, Norwood, the, uh, the, the Pops, the Boston Pops to town. So we're going to recognize them. Uh, and we're also going to recognize Little Bird Events, which is uh, a neighbor of ours down at the Norwood Space Center. Uh, they've recently expanded their space. They do some great events. They support local nonprofits. So uh, it's a great opportunity to kind of shine a light on these businesses that maybe people don't know about. 
Yeah, any business is eligible to join as long as you know they're in business, whether it's one person or 3,000 employees, whatever it might be. Uh, if, if they're interested in joining, they can be part of the group. We'll be right back with an action-packed sports report from Ron Marshallsey, and Officer Baguma stops in to talk about an upcoming community event. Did you know Norwood Community Media has a weekly newsletter? If you are interested in signing up, all you have to do is go to our website, norwoodcommunitymedia.org. Once you're there, scroll to the bottom of the page and click on the Sign Up for Our Newsletter button. All you have to do after that is fill out your first and last name, your email, as well as your zip code. Once you press send at the end of each week, you will have our newsletter in your inbox, ready for you to catch up on all things Norwood. Jeffrey Baguma of the Nord Police Department is organizing an event to celebrate Black History Month in February. Baguma has all the details for the upcoming event and how you can get involved. Hello, Nord, how are you? I am School Resource Officer Jeffrey Baguma. I hope you are ready for another amazing event. This event is going to be called Still I Rise. It's a Black History Month event, which is going to be um, at the Nord High School on the 18th of February. It's going to run from 2 to 5 p.m. So we won't mess with any of your uh, nighttime activities or any chores or what you have to do prior to. Um, it's going to incorporate uh, students from the Coakley Middle School as well as the high school. It's going to start as a red carpet event with a uh, museum we're going to create, which are, is going to contain art and possibly a, a living wax museum and artifacts and you name it, we'll have it there. It's going to be beautifully put together. The second part of this event is going to incorporate um, great singers, great storytellers. The storyteller is going to be a Charlotte Lucien, um, who will not bore you, but he'll educate you on history and also touch on uh, past and present traumas as well. He does it great. Um, we're also going to have an amazing opera singer. If you haven't heard of him yet, his name is Pierre Fontaine. Yes, homegrown here in Norwood. He's going to astound you with his vocals, with his pipes. Uh, we're going to have a fashion show and that's going to be uh, run by a Tyler Williamson. All right, she's going to, she's right now putting together uh, fashion design and, and outfits specifically for this event. Uh, so that's going to be exciting. Trend in Motion is going to be there, a dance group out of Boston who are going to wow you with their moves, very engaging with the crowd, as well as, um, you know, they're also going to, to touch uh, on, on past traumas and present traumas, and we're gonna roll that out into certain resources because no matter what you're talking about, no matter what culture you're, um, you're, you're showing, off, uh, that is something that's really important across the board. Um, I mean, we're gonna have beautiful food, amazing food, Island Oasis, Caribbean, um, Oasis Caribbean from here in Norwood. Uh, it's just going to be such a powerful, um, engaging, uh, positive, and uh, inclusive event. So, please reach out to me uh, with any questions or you know any uh, if you want to volunteer in some way and uh, I will see you there do not miss out thanks officer Baguma what a great community event celebrating Black History Month and now we're gonna toss it over to Joey Devingo with school news I'm Joey Devingo and let's take a look at some activities happening in our Nord schools this week this week at Nord High School the guidance department held their college planning night for juniors the staff provided an overview of the college admission process and a college admission counselors also took part in the presentation. If you missed it, the program was recorded and it will be broadcasted on NCM. This Friday, the Coakley Middle School is having a teen night from 6 to 8.30. There will be snacks and juice, a school-wide manhunt, and open gym. Thanks to the Coakley PTO for sponsoring this event. There is a lot of writing happening at the Callahan School and the students are so proud of their work. Jill Wood's second grade class read the book A Walk in the Words about differences and overcoming challenges. The students also created a piece of a diversity quilt and discussed the beauty and uniqueness. And fourth grade students read the book Fame and Glory in Freedom, Georgia. Students connected with the main characters in the story, including Bird, Harlem, and Miss Delphin. They wrote about how special Bird was and why they liked this character. Let's hear from the students. 
This is a book called Flame and Glory in Freedom, Georgia. And Here are two things that we really like about this book. this book. My favorite thing about this book is Harlem and he how he's really kind to Bird and helpful. My favorite part about this story was wanting to stop being helpful. If you, if you haven't read, read this book, book the fourth grade students at the Old Ham School are excited to work on their letter writing skills. This year, they are matched with a school from Chico, California to be pen pals for the school year. Students have been writing back and forth about their favorite things and what traditions they have in their families. This month, the Old Ham students shared what it is like to live in Massachusetts by creating a travel brochure for their pen pal. Each month, they are anxiously awaiting their new letters to arrive. The Prescott Student Council continued its vigorous advocacy work on behalf of the Prescott students. The 3rd, 4th, and 5th grade student council this week met with the Director of Food Services, Eli Norris, and NPS dietitian Shana. The group advocated for the return of a a la carte to the menu for elementary school students. This option was available to elementary students prior to the pandemic lunch adjustments, and the student council would like to see it brought back. While a decision is currently pending, the council is already looking for its next area to improve student life at the Prescott School. Student Council Advisors Principal Brian Riley and Head Teacher Miss Thornton are very proud of the work that Lilith, Mackenzie, Nathan, Jaden, Gavin, and Owen are doing. Well, that's it for the school news. The students are always learning, and thanks to all the educators who share their school news with us. Now let's go to Ron Marshallsee with the latest in sports. I'm Ron Marshallsee and this is your sports update. Girls basketball had two big wins this past week, beating Medway 52-35 and dover Sherborne 44-41. NCM was covering the game and announcers Molly Matchek and Joey O'Connor caught up with junior captain Trisha Wachowski after the huge win. And it looks like we're going to have a player of the game down there, Trisha Wachowski, he's going to jump on the headset. So awesome. Looks Love like it. We're gonna be, looks like we're going to be interviewing Trisha Wachowski live. Trisha, can you hear us down there? Yeah. All right. Great game, way to close that out. Um, what do you think of that last sequence there from freshman Bella Course? Tough bucket on one end, secures the loose ball on the other end. Yeah, what do you have to say about that freshman? Bella has been like very, very good with us lately, and um, she's just a very aggressive player, so she's a really good addition to the team, especially as a freshman. Yeah, Molly and I have noticed that up here the past few games. She's relentless on the glass, on the on the floor, even as a, a smaller freshman guard. She does not give up. Um, and what did you see for yourself out there, Trish Wachowski? I had you at double-digit points tonight, but you also were a great playmaker. You hit a couple big threes. I think one of them Molly and I called right before you hit it. I called it, just so you know. She <laughs> did. I'm a witness. What were um, you seeing out there tonight on well, the floor? Like, we just we knew it was going to be a hard game going in. Dover Sherburn was 7-1 and one going into this game. So I think we all played very well. We practiced, and we just made a lot of plays together. It was, it was a good team win, definitely. I was just literally just going to say that. That's the thing we noticed, you know, first and foremost, is what a team effort that was. So congrats to you guys evening up the uh, playing field as far as TVL rankings. You are now tied with Dover Sherbrooke. Yeah. yeah, I believe that ties you guys up. So congrats on the big dub tonight, Church Wilkowski. We'll, uh, we'll let you head back with the team huddle there. I don't want you to miss anything. But Thank you. Great game. Thank you. Game. The girls' next games are Friday the 20th at Dedham at 530 and home against Bellingham Tuesday the 24th at 6. The boys' basketball team is continuing their role with wins over both Medway 67-65 and dover Sherborne 59-48. Senior captain Noah Boudet dropped 38 points in the win over dover Sherborne. Their next games will be Friday the 20th at home against Dedham at 6.30 and again at 6.30 at Bellingham Tuesday the 24th. In hockey news, the girls' team has had a solid stretch of wins beating King Phillip 6-2, St. Joseph Prep 6-0 and Natick 2-1. On Martin Luther King Day, the team had a rare Monday matinee, and NCM was there with announcers Molly Matchek and Ty Gonsalves. Senior captain Morgan Roach scored a hat trick before the first period even ended in the win against St. Joseph's. The three other goals were scored by sophomore Molly Roach, junior Molly Federico, and sophomore Emily Spadorsha. Here is Molly and Ty with the call on Morgan Roach's third goal of the game, cementing herself the hat trick. Oh, great play by Roach there. Roach carries it through. She's going to move right around the defenseman and bring it right in close. And it's a goal for the hat trick for Morgan Roach. And that is a beautiful way to start <laughs> your afternoon. <laughs> I would agree. So right now we're looking at a 3-0 Norwood lead. Um, 3.55 left in period one. 
The team had great defense in the Natick win where Lauren Galvin played an excellent two-way game and scored the game-winning goal. The girls' next game will be Sunday, January 22nd at 12 p.m. versus Dedham. The boys had a big hard-fought win over rival Dedham this week with goals coming from sophomore Ryan Valeri, sophomore Anthony Riccardi, and two goals by senior captain Sean Dittmeyer. Junior Anthony Amato had 23 saves in net in the win. NCM was at this game and here is the family duo of Mike and Brendan Crowley with the call of Ryan Valeri's shorthanded breakaway goal. Oh, and Connor Lund, and actually it is, yeah. What a play. So that excellent play, wow, shorthanded, number 28, Ryan, Ryan Valeri. Valeri, wow. How about the heads up play, not only to take the puck, but just to beat the defender to the net, unbelievable, and the shot. Yeah, absolutely. What a play from your sophomore. Their next game is Saturday the 21st at 8.30 at Bellingham. Both swim and dive teams had tough losses to Ashland and Westwood this week, but NHS swimmer Michael Flynn broke his own school record in the 100 backstroke. NCM was there covering the Westwood meet, and you'll be able to watch it next week. Girls track and field lost to Westwood this week, but look to turn things around when they go to Medfield, where they will match up with the Warriors on Friday, January 27th at 4.30. The boys will also face Medfield next, also the 27th at 4.30. Wrestling had a great showing at their quad meet this past week, going 2-1-1. One, one. The Mustangs won big against Boston Latin Academy 60-24 and Durfee 54-15. They lost to Oliver Ames but were able to tie with Milton. On Wednesday the 18th, the team lost to Ashland but will be competing in a tri-meet at King Philip this Saturday the 21st at 10 a.m. The team will be facing King Philip, Mansfield and Southeastern Regional Vocational Tech. As always, the sporting events we cover will be rebroadcasted on our community channel and available on demand on the NCM website. And for coverage next week, NCM will be covering the girls' basketball game with Joe Panola and Joey O'Connor on the mics and will be live Wednesday at 7 p.m. for the wrestling match against Bellingham with announcers Brian McDonough and Mike McDonough. And that will do it for this sports update. I'm Ron Marshallsey. And Norwood News will be right back after this break. Norwood Community Media has its own video on-demand channels. You can go to our website, norwoodcommunitymedia.org, and click on whichever on-demand channel you are looking for, whether it be things to do in the community, events at the schools, or town government meetings. Once you click on one, you are going to be taken to a screen in which you can search for stories or videos you missed on TV or just want to watch again. Just click on the search bar on top of the page and start typing. Once you've found what you're looking for, just click in the middle of the video where the play button is and you are off enjoying one of the three on-demand channels NCM has to offer. The Conservation Commission met on Wednesday night and had two public hearings. The first one, the Neponset River Landholding Association, requested a temporary access roadblock from Brook Street through bordering vegetated wetlands. They also requested to slip line the existing low-level outlet pipes to replace low-level outlet valves, and to install trash racks at inlets. Uh, we're required to construct a temporary access drive. And uh, so in my figure that I'm sharing on my screen, you can see the alignment of our temporary access drive. And so how <laughs> we propose to construct this, uh, and this we've, you know, we had several conversations with Holly Jones, uh, you know, and then we had a site visit where we discussed this as well. Uh, with members of the commission. Uh, so the temporary access drive is going to be constructed by placing a temporary fill and it's going to have a banked side and in order to limit um, the uh, impacts into the boarding vegetated wetland, uh, what you know the discussions that we've had as a mitigation, activities, uh, we propose providing a delineation between a temporary fill and the existing grading at the site, and particularly in the footprint of the um, wetland area. So prior to constructing this temporary access drive, we're going to place fabric and temporary timber crane mats within the footprint of the BMW prior to placing the temporary fill. After much discussion, the board approved the request. The second public hearing of the night was presented by Moderna. They are requesting a new construction project where site work would be in front of the 200 riverfront area of an intermittent stream. 
The planning board is also reviewing the plans for the proposed construction site. The commission decided to postpone the vote until the next meeting when more information was gathered. The Conservation Commission will meet again on February 1st. Capital Outlay met on Wednesday evening. Vice Chair Kevin Conley called the meeting to order and requested a moment of silence for their former chair, Tom McQuaid, who sadly passed away in December. The first order of business was to elect a new chair. Selectman Robert Donnelly was unanimously elected as chair of the committee. With that business complete, the committee got down to new business and began discussing possible revisions to the bylaw and capital outlay financial policy. The committee adjourned after agreeing to meet again on Thursday, February 9th to continue reviewing possible changes to the process. Sometimes we all need to take a break and hit the reset button, especially in the winter. To help combat some of the stress and the aches and pains of the winter cold, we turn to restorative massage and wellness at their new location on Washington Street. Located at their new space at 714 Washington Street in the heart of Norwood Center, restorative massage and wellness takes a clinical approach to massage therapy. It is a beautiful day at restorative massages and wellness and uh, my name is Isaac and I have been in Norwood for the past uh, seven years since 2015-16. I was uh, working as, uh, at the uh, Essential Day Spa and at 532 Washington Street and we moved to 681 Washington Street in 2018 so we just moved to that new location right now at 714 Washington Street and I've been serving the community in Norwood uh, since 2015 about like seven years. With over 21 years of experience in the medical field, Isaac leverages his strong assessment skills to develop and execute the best treatment plan based on each client's needs. His clinical approach to massage therapy allows Isaac to achieve maximum benefit for clients in each session. Here at Restorative Massages and Wellness, we do things a little bit different. We want to, every single client that walks through the door, they feel comfortable and feel welcome and warm welcome. And we do a lot of extra things we add on on our service. That's like our brain, that's make us different. I've been a nursing assistant as well since 2002 and I've been trained by physical therapists and occupational therapists since 2005. So I've been working with them. I'm very comfortable and very good on stretching. So that means sports massage is something that is very popular here that we offer and also as well as couples massage. We offer um, all kind of like uh, service, like a deep tissue sports massage and uh, hot stone massage. But one of the main focus, we do a couples massage as well as the spa treatment that we offer as well. Uh, the couples massage is the most popular. Isaac is proud to announce with the new location, a new product line is also available. Restorative carries products by Avita, which specializes in essential oils, body oils, and aromas. But most of all, Isaac is happy to have his shop here in Norwood. I mean, I love working in Norwood and I love the community and the people in Norwood, they're very supportive and I've been very blessed to be around the town of Norwood. They've been kind of like supporting me from the beginning to the end, even with the construction. They helped me out uh, with the, you know, inspection and everything. I'm very proud to be, you know, serving the community. To learn more about Isaac and Restorative Massage and Wellness, check out their website or give them a call at 781-349-6608. I'll be booking my massage as soon as my season is over. Well, that's all for Norwood News. To stay up to date with Norwood Community Media, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend.